Hey, hey, hey. Howdy do die, y'all. Um, I am in a chipper mood today, and I truly hope each and every one of you is having a good week so far. First and foremost, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, the support in the last few episodes has been, um, have been amazing. Has been amazing. Mm. I can't say thank you enough to everybody who listens. It honestly makes me all warm and tingly inside. And it it just feels great. Uh, I don't have much else to share with you. I just kind of wanted to say thank you really quick. Although I am starting a new fine dining bartending job in a few weeks, which I'm pretty excited about. And super nervous. I've never done any of that classy stuff before. So we'll see how this Midwest short guy gets on. Oh, shoot, sorry. One more side note really quick. Apparently Google now has this feature to find a song by humming the lyrics. Yes, I'm happy about it. But why did it take so long? I feel like people have been humming lyrics to their friends for years, like idiots, in hopes that they might know what the song is. Anyways, without further ado, I'm Eli, and this is Murder in the Morning. My sources today come from the ever-splendid Wikipedia, as well as an article by Michelle Schuf of OutdoorActive.com. For some reason, I struggled extra hard to pick a topic for today. I swear I stared at the same wiki page for 30 minutes before deciding that it, mm, I couldn't pronounce half the words. Thank you, Finland. And then I remembered the old saying, when in doubt, German it out. Today, I bring you German serial killer, Johann Eichhorn, a.k.a. the Beast of Abing. Oh shit, I didn't look up that pronunciation. Today, I bring you German serial killer, Johann Eichhorn, also known as the Beast of Obing. And to be completely honest with you, I kind of adore the name Johann. Unfortunately, this guy isn't the best. This is another one of those stories that initially was swept under the rug as best as possible by the Nazi regime. This was back in the late 30s, early 40s, and of course they wouldn't want any news of a serial killer getting out. And between the propaganda and the censorship, they managed to do just that. So for decades... Very few people outside of Munich itself had even heard of this guy. Not to mention, every other horrible thing happening in the world during the time, it's no surprise that it was kept hidden. Okay. Born on October 8th, 1906, in the district of Obing in Munich, Germany. Unlike many cases we hear, or many cases I've talked about even, Johann had a pretty stable childhood. He was the oldest of eight children born to two hardworking parents who did their very best to support the family and provided somewhat well, even with 10 people, you know, to feed. The only issue that Johan really seemed to struggle with was one that I think is quite common. Quote, it wasn't always easy for Johan in his youth. Outwardly, he looked like a popular and charming young man. Inwardly, he struggled with the unusual features of a sex drive. Although Johann offered numerous opportunities to have consensual relationships with women, he did not make it. Eichhorn himself would later state that he had a disturbed relationship with women, claiming that he felt no excitement when he kissed and only began feeling pleasure when violence was involved. End quote. Therein lied the real problem. After finishing grade school, or elementary school, if you will, he took a job as a, quote, shunter for a railroad, rail, mm, railroad company. Uh, I had to look up what that meant, because I had never heard of it before. Essentially, it just means he was the guy that would connect and disconnect trains before and after departure, making sure that they had the supplies they needed, or they were going in the right direction, blah, blah, blah. Kind of a cool job, honestly. 
Here, he remained a, quote, good employee until his first attack at the age of 22 in the year 1928. It was also this year that he seemed to really settle into this double life of his. Throughout his entire life, he was described as helpful and reliable by his co-workers or his family, and no one saw what was to come. Quote, in 1928, he observed, he observed a pretty young girl bathing in a river, and a pattern of cruel subsequent acts began. He followed the girl, pulled her off her bike, and tried to rape her. The girl struggled and fought back and ended up, ended up getting away with horror. End quote. It appears as if this crime went unreported initially, or at least uninvestigated, because nothing ever came of it. But that same year, he was alleged to sexually assault or rape two of his younger sisters. Three years later, during an Oktoberfest celebration, Johann met a 16-year-old maid named Katerina, and they hit it off. A few days later, Johann invited her on a bike ride to a nearby monastery. Here, everything seemed normal. They started cuddling, having a good time. But then he attacked her, started to rape her, and when she fought back, he strangled her to death. He then proceeded to dump her body in a nearby river, and her death, although her body was found, would remain unsolved for years to come. And this would basically become Johann's long-term pattern. Quote, his modus operandi was to attack young women in Western Munich, threatening them with either a pistol or a knife before he beat, raped, and sometimes robbed them. End quote. Dirty little rat man. Okay, before we get any further, I do have to preface something. Clearly, Johann is a killer, and I will cover those deaths. But, as you can tell, He's also a serial rapist, like a very serial rapist, 90 convicted rapes kind of serial rapist. I don't know what the current record is, but it's got to be up there near the top. So I just want you to keep in mind that in between these murders that I talk about, he was always continuously and viciously attacking women. Unfortunately, I don't have too much information on hardly any of those attacks, as many weren't confirmed until years later, or even unreported. All right, 1934 rolls around, and Johan just simply can't contain himself. He's, he's done the best he could, and now on May 30th, newlywed Anna Forstenrider was biking along a quiet path when out of nowhere, Johan appeared. Just the sight of him made Anna turn around, but it was too late. As she sped off, Johan caught up with her, ripped her from the bike, raped her, killed her, and then proceeded to mutilate her body before burying her in some nearby bushes. Only her bike would ever be found. Only a few months later, Eichhorn would strike again. Quote, On Saturday, September 8, 1934, Berta Sauerbach spent the evening with her friend and a few colleagues in the Wartburg pub on, forgive me, but Anstras, as the night drew to a close, Berta took the tram home. She had often gone home alone at night, and she wasn't afraid. It was not very far from the tram station to her home by bike. But when she didn't show up for work on Monday, her family and friends worried, and they were certain something must have happened. It was later discovered that 25-year-old clerk Berta Sauerbach was attacked while riding in the Milbert Schaffen district, since she was fiercely resisted, oh, sorry, she fiercely resisted his advances, and Johann shot Sauerbach in the back of her head with a pistol. Initially, she survived the shot, but then Eichhorn buried the injured woman under a garbage pit, where she subsequently died. End quote. Just so brutal and thoughtless, all because he thinks women don't like him. I mean, now they don't, but they could have. In 1935, Eichhorn ended up marrying a young woman named Josefa, with whom he had two children over a couple of years, I believe in 36 and 37. And despite being married, he continued to attack women. Although at this time, 
there were no deaths or fatalities recorded while he was married to Yosefa. According to Eichhorn, after he was caught, this was because his wife loved the violent sex that they had had, allowing him to keep his urges under control. And to that, I have zero response. Unfortunately, this uh, hate fuck of a marriage wouldn't help for long. And in 1937, Johann Eichhorn would kill again. 25-year-old seamstress Rosa Eigelen began biking home late one night, just like many of the past victims. Johann had just been peeing on a tree when she passed by, randomly. And at that moment, he decided that he wanted her. So as she continued to bike along, Johann grabbed his own bike, quickly sped up and caught up to Rosa, yanked her from the bike where he proceeded to rape and kill this young woman. Again, I believe by strangulation, where he proceeded to mutilate her dead body and left her on the, on the roadside to rot. Thankfully, uh, her body was found shortly. A year later, in September of 1938, a young servant named Maria would meet the same fate while riding home on her bike late at night. Her body was found two weeks later, hidden in some brush by two people that happened to be walking by. If not for those two, her body would have been most likely undiscovered for years, just as Anna had been in the beginning. Finally, finally, in 1939, the Beast of Obing's reign of terror came to an end. Quote, on January 29th, 1939, during a carnival parade, Johann Eichhorn tried to attack a girl yet again. This girl was 12 years old. Coincidentally, coincidentally, <laughs> however, he was watched by some passerbys, and as they saw him attack this young girl, they stepped in and held him until the police finally took him away. During his pretrial detention, he confessed to five individual murders over the course of several months of interrogations, in which he described himself as a, quote, wild animal. Then, he was examined by various doctors and psychologists who concluded that he was of average intelligence, but was, quote, an ethically and morally profound, unfounded, weak-willed, unusually sexually instinctive psychopath who plans his crimes in advance and carries them out in such a manner, end quote. That part I found kind of weird since, I mean, we just talked about the girl or the woman who was just randomly biking by and he kind of just went with it. That There was no premeditation in that action whatsoever. And also, I don't know what they mean by morally profound unfounded these old words from 1940 1930 just sometimes don't translate okay when asked why only five of the numerous the 90 rape victims were killed icorn replied with this he said he shot them instinctively only if they resisted fiercely as he had no idea what else to do in that situation and then they could be, quote, fully his once they were dead, end quote. Gross. Absolutely despicable. I'm just very, very thankful that it was only five of 90, like six or seven percent. I hope for zero, obviously, for none of that to happen, but he could have done so much more damage. Thankfully, his punishment for these crimes was ultimate. Convicted of the five murders and all 90 rapes, Johann Eichhorn, well, hopefully all 90 rapes, Johann Eichhorn was executed by guillotine on December 1st, 1939, in the prison yard. Yay. Just, I, again, I can't believe I hadn't heard of this guy before. He's, this is absolutely insane. I mean... I truly think we're sleeping on Germany's serial killers. My goodness. There's just so many of them that have been covered up or forgotten about just because of the time and the place and the other, I mean, very important world affairs that were going on. But we can't forget about 
the families and the women who were missing and murdered just because the Nazis don't want us to know about it. Anyways, I think that's all for you today, folks. Um, another quick one, but that's okay. In and out, 20 minute adventure. Oh, um, deep breath. I've never said this before, and trust me, I feel super duper awkward about asking. But if you did enjoy this episode or a previous episode or anything, or if you feel bad for me, I would sincerely appreciate if you left a rating or a review or just followed me or any of the above or none of them. Um, sorry. Okie dokie. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. I will see you this weekend. Bye-bye. Love you.